I think I want to start by talking to you about how I started out on Wall Street uh, briefly, just to give you a sense for what's changed. We are in the midst of a revolution, a different type of revolution than the one that Dick had to, um, to navigate in his career, um, but one that's, that's equally um, important and transformational for the world of investing. Um, when I started in the mid-90s, um, I worked for uh, a CTA, a commodity trading advisor called Melbourne Richfield, which has been around for about 30 years. Um, this, um, this firm was one of the first firms to systematically trade futures markets. They managed about $2 billion. Um, they were one of the largest funds of their type in the world, and um, I was an execution trader for them um, on their futures trading desk, so I talked to guys on the floor like where Dick was, and we would communicate our orders um, through the brokers and execute on the floor very large size orders. Um, a lot of my friends were in investment banking, um, which is um, in the creation of securities. And when I tell them what I did um, to give you a sense for how things have changed, they, they kind of ask me, like, is that really a thing? They didn't really think that systematic trading was really a thing. Um, they ask me, you know, so you predict prices? How, how can you do that? Um, so you, you do trades based on what an algorithm tells you to do? How can you do that? And nowadays, we don't really question that, but in the mid-'90s, that was pretty unusual, and a lot of people questioned that. So that's one of the things that has changed, is um, we now believe in systematic trading um, across the industry. It's be become a good, big part of what we do. And um, as I progressed through my career, I had to reinvent myself. I had to learn new skills um, every couple of years, and I still do today. I work mostly with people your age. And uh, they challenge me every day to learn new stuff. I do a lot of machine learning, a lot of data science, um, and a lot of programming even today, you know, doing what I do. Um, I want to talk to you today about an opportunity that um, you may not be aware of. But in order to get a job at a hedge fund um, is very difficult. It was difficult in the 90s. It's difficult today. It's even more so today. There aren't that many hedge funds. They don't hire that many people. Uh, you usually have to go to, uh, you know, like a top five or ten school to even get an interview. And that's a real shame because so many people are talented um, and have the opportunity to add value on the investing side and don't get an opportunity to do that. CloudQuant is the world's first free cloud-based platform that allows people to do institutional quality research with high-frequency data. We offer um, alternative data sets just like you'd have at a, um, a hedge fund. And we allocate capital to your strategies. If we see strategies that have a high enough risk-adjusted return, we'll allocate capital, we'll operate the strategies for you, and we'll pay you a share of the profits. This is a new business model. It hasn't been around very long. But what it does is turn things around so that you don't have to get the interview. You can sign up online. You can spend your own free time engaging in research at an institutional level and you can use your own creativity to add value. So the Quant Trading Tesseract, if any of you are, I have kids, so, um, so I know what the Tesseract is because I've got a lot of um, superhero fans in the house. But um, also, if you're a mathematician, you might have heard of it. But the Tesseract is, is kind of four dimensions of things that come together to create something very powerful. And in this case, the Quant Trading Tesseract is the confluence of cloud computing um, alternative data sets, which Larry talked about a bunch of them. There's, you know, Planet has satellites that will be in the sky mapping every square inch of the Earth once a day within a year. It's going to generate petabytes of data, and there are going to be opportunities for people to analyze that and figure out what to do with it. How is it going to influence um, uh, crop supply and demand? How is it going to influence uh, shoppers at Walmart? How is it going to influence um, energy prices? And how is it going to influence, you know... Um, when another um, ICBM gets launched in North Korea. All these things are things that you get from this data set. Um, so alternative data is, is growing very rapidly, and the ability to get access to it is mostly held by the, um, the larger firms. We are leveling the playing field by, by going out and gathering those data sets and providing them to you for free on our platform on the cloud. 
So you essentially get to be just like a hedge fund analyst from your own home, um, provided you're willing to learn Python and spend a little time. And that's really all it takes. The third, the third component of this is machine learning. Um, I've been doing machine learning since the late 90s. Um, it is a very effective tool for, um, for building trading strategies. It's um, really something that makes you much more efficient. Um, a lot of people have asked me, like, with all these machine learning algorithms, aren't they going to destabilize the market? And, you know, um, the long story short is really, no. They're coming up with rule sets that are very similar to the ones you'd come up with on your own. If you didn't use machine learning, you just get there a lot faster. Um, and then finally, this is where all you come in. Um, crowd researchers. We have people in 120 countries doing research on our platform. We have um, people who haven't even f finished college who are already um, submitting algorithms for allocations that we could allocate $5, $10 million to, and they'll get you know, 10% of the net trading profit from those strategies. They're being treated like a partner. That's never happened before. If you don't think that's engaging, you should do the math. <laughs> it's pretty hard to get that, that share of a profit at a hedge fund if you work for them as an employee. So here we are offering that to anybody who has an internet connection. That's pretty incredible. So I talk about a revolution that we're going through here. This is going to change the hedge fund industry. It's going to change how people manage money. Um, using this Tesseract is the first, it's the first time that our industry has been able to have a chance of generating alpha at scale. Typically, as asset center management go up, your returns go down. You can't find enough ideas. Um, by leveraging the sheer mass and size of the crowd, we have the ability to actually create something that scales with the size of the fund. Um, now, I want to spend the last part talking about what you can do to harness your superpowers. You're young, most of you. I'm, 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 uh, I'm feeling a little younger than, than I usually do, but... Uh, but I'm pretty old in this room. And, um, and you guys have the opportunity to shape your careers. You have an opportunity to listen to some of the speakers and think about what they went through. And what I can tell you is you absolutely have to do things you love. But you have a chance single-handedly, without anybody looking at your resume, to try and change an industry. You have an, an opportunity to learn new technologies and become an active participant in changing the industry. And if you think about some of the stories you've heard today you'll realize that a lot of those things, you know, are, are the things that drove uh, the people before you. You need to have a lifelong interest in learning. Um, I read, like, I don't know, three or four technical books a month on different things having to do with science or technology uh, because I manage people who do, and I have to know what they're talking about. Um, I also try and give them ideas based on things I've read. Um, but I think the most valuable thing of anybody in this room is your own imaginations. I think even if you feel like you don't have the hard foundational skills to do programming or something like that right now, look, I've got a 10-year-old who started programming in Python when she was 8. She's a smart kid, but she's no smarter than you. And the reality is all you have to do is start. You just have to decide you're going to start and do it. Um, if you spend a couple of years trying using Coursera, other online courses. You have so many resources today that give you the ability to, um, to learn new skills. And they will be a pathway for you to find things that you like, to find ways to, to have a, a career that's enriching to you and that will be rewarding for you financially and emotionally. Um, you need to find things that you really love, um, which is like what Dick said, you know, follow your smile. Um, but you have to accept the fact that you con constantly are going to have to continually um, learn new things. Um, you're finishing school. And when I finished school, I thought, well, I'm finishing graduate school at MIT. You know, I think I'm done learning. I, I must know it all. And then I came to New York, and I realized I didn't know anything. And I, I basically had to start all over again. I had a whole, whole different set of things that I had to learn. And that hasn't changed. I mean, I, um, I, like I said, I, I feel like I walk in the office every day and guys are doing stuff I don't understand. And I, I want to understand it. So I, you know, I go in there and I ask them, you know, how'd you learn how to do that? And I get them to show me. Um, be that person. Be the person who's constantly looking at new stuff, 
constantly bringing it up at work, saying, hey, you know, I saw this other idea I was thinking about. I've been working on this open source project. Um, take a look at GitHub. There's all these people who do free software development on GitHub, and they just share their, their software with you. You can learn so much by looking at other people's work and how to get started, and they have, you know, basically things that you can start from to test out. Um, and then finally, pay attention to nascent te technologies, whether it's the Tesseract for quant trading or whether it's blockchain. Figure out what it's all about. Figure out what it's all about early so that you can see an opportunity um, in your career when it comes along and say, hey, I read about that. That actually is a really interesting idea, and it's going places. It's not just something, it's not a fad that, that just um, somebody talked about on TV. Um, and then finally, you know, I'd encourage you to be yourself. Everybody, I, I speak with dozens of researchers around the world uh, every month uh, because of my role at CloudQuant. Um, and they're asking for funding, and I learn a little bit about them. And what, I, what I've learned is there are so many amazing people in the world, and each one of you is one of them. And there is no reason why your opinions shouldn't matter. And now they do. If you want to do something like this or some other sort of crowd research-based thing or some other based uh, technology, uh, disruptive technology-based thing, you can. Um, the tools are out there on the Internet to learn how to acquire these skills, even if you didn't study them in school. And you have the ability to make, make a change. So I would encourage you to do that. We go back to the final step, which is the Tesseract. You are the most important link to this. Um, and whether it's in financial investment um, technology with CloudQuant or whether it's in some other industry, your ideas will change what the world is if you listen to your heart and if you have the um, confidence and the courage to try something new. Thank you.